Hey everyone and welcome back to the Rumcast. We have a really fun episode today to share with you, including our feature interview with the preeminent rum reviewer, Mr. Wes Bergen, who some of you may know better as the Fat Rum Pirate. And also, we're going to share the results of our crazy fantasy rum draft that we just did. Uh, But before we get to those things, let's first play a little game of where in the world is co-host Will (laughs) Hookinga. Uh, Will, uh, where are you coming to us from here? So yeah, this is actually our first ever international recording of the Rumcast, (laughs) where one of us is in another country. I'm on the road right now. Samantha and I have been on a vacation for the past eight days. We started out in Barcelona. We're now in Rome. We actually took the train today to Florence and spent spent the day there, just got back to Rome. Mm-hmm. Now I'm uh, recording this this intro quickly before we go find something to eat. But John, I know you recently, you didn't go to Barcelona, but I know you were in Paris, you were in Rome, you were also mm-hmm. in Florence. We've been to some of the same places. And so I wanted to, you know, I've seen so many incredible, just awe-inspiring things on my journey yeah. these past eight days. And since I know you were over here recently as well, I wanted to ask, you, you I feel like you know me pretty well, and mm-hmm. I know you pretty well. I wanted mm-hmm. to see if you can guess what the most amazing thing I've seen so far is. And, you oh. know, I just to recap it real quickly for you, um, you know, I walked into the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. Okay. Samantha okay. mentioned she was nearly moved to tears because it was so beautiful. Uh, I took in a sunset at Park Guay overlooking the city mm-hmm. of Barcelona. Mm-hmm. I observed from horseback the rugged cliffs of Montserrat and its wow. abbey that dates back to the 11th century walked up and down and underneath the Colosseum, looked upon the ruins from Palatine Hill, Uh gazed up at the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, at the Piazza del Duomo, and then the Statue of David today. And yet, all of that and many other sites I did not mention pale in comparison to two nights ago when I finally checked the results of our (laughs) inaugural (laughs) Rumcast Fantasy Rum Draft and discovered... That 62.7% of our listeners who voted believed that I drafted the superior rum bar. And in the head-to-head categories voting, I took 9 out of the 15 total categories, making me our first ever league champion. So I haven't had time to prepare a speech. This opening (laughs) monologue will have to do. But I, you know, I had to take a victory lap really quickly here and share the results with the people. So I don't know if you have anything to add there, but I, I just wanted to start with that. You know, first of all, I will be uh, a, a good, good loser here and say congratulations. Uh, well, well earned. Thank I, you. I do believe you had a really good strategy going in, uh, which was similar to mine uh, in a lot of ways. It was. And, it was uh, eerie how similar our strategies were. Um, yeah, yeah. Had you won the coin toss and gotten the first pick it may have gone the it, other way i i think it would have i think it would have been really interesting because yeah i would have taken rum fire right from you there and then it would have been all bets are off yeah um but yeah i so i think you did a a good job honestly it was just it was very fun to do as an exercise and i'm glad we had a lot of good response to it yes um and I'm very happy to share the results it was closer than you're making it seem <laughs> in my opinion so yes i, it's I mean true. if if we're comparing this to like uh an, an american presidential election i think they would call 62 <laughs> percent of the popular vote i think that would be uh, a landslide is the technical uh uh, word for it but we sure, also kind of did our context. own little we, we also kind of have our electoral college vote with the head-to-head yeah, uh, categories that's right. and that's right. uh and you did you did better in there there were some there were some really close calls in mm-hmm. a lot of them that were super interesting things i didn't expect um and we have those like like you said we'll we'll put a link up um or we'll we'll add the results to the episode page on the website for that episode and we'll put a link to that in the show notes for this episode and just in case anyone missed the previous episode just really quickly John and I concocted this way to apply the competition of fantasy sports to rum by drafting fantasy rum bars and you can go back as the previous episode and check it out if you missed it. And actually, we'll we'll even leave the voting up for a little while longer yeah. just to see if, if more votes trickle in. You can go to rumcast.com slash vote 
to do the voting. And if mm-hmm. anything changes, we'll we'll update that yeah, in a future yeah. episode. Those of you who out there who thought I did definitely <laughs> have the better rum bar, you better go vote if you haven't voted yet. Or anyone who just thinks I'm really annoying on the podcast <laughs> and, and w- would prefer John beat me, you can you can go and try to make that happen uh, now. But I did. But before we get to the interview with with Wes, which I am excited about because it was a really fun interview. Yeah, I wanted to ask: Were there what what kind of surprised you the most about the head to head vote? Because there were certainly a, a few things that surprised me. Yeah, there were some really unsurprising ones. Uh, sure. For instance, you know the the diplomatic pot still number three. You know, got killed, dominated by Worthy Park, which I expected, but not necessarily to that degree. Uh, it was very one-sided with that. Um, 81% to 19% on that yeah. one. So I'm not not surprised by that one. Um, what, what I am surprised at is some of the other ones that I thought were really, really close. Yeah. And some of the ones that were, I mean, just, just the results in general. And, and you know, we're, not, we're ta- not talking huge numbers here, like you said, but enough that we can kind of get a gauge for uh, rum enthusiasts and, and some really interesting things. So one one of the the, the head head to head homes key category non caribbean yeah. rum was really interesting and super close Very uh, close. which was uh 50.9% for the south africa homes key moba Mm-hmm. And then forty nine point one for the Australia. Yeah, I, very close. I can see that. I can see I how that happened. I expected to lose yeah. that one, and I remember you 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 were kind of like thinking it could go the other it way. It could go just either way. Moba yeah. can be a little bit of a divisive rum, but yeah. uh, the Moba fans really they they came through and, and pulled that one out for you. Yeah. What, think, what about you though? Yeah, what did you see on there that yeah, was interesting? For me, it was interesting because I felt really great about my picks after the draft, and then I was texting you afterwards. I was going through and looking back through the sheet, and I was like, "Man, I was really sweating some of these. I had no idea if I would win." And, and one example of those was Worthy Park One Hundred Nine versus yeah. Hamilton Jamaica Pot Still Black. Mm-hmm. Hamilton uh, Jamaica Black has tons of really big fans and so i was really surprised that worthy park 109 just like dominated that category it was 69.6 percent to 30.4 percent which was, mm-hmm. I, I did not expect that at all and um also i think the least surprising thing to me was uh probitas just taking Hamilton Dominating. White Stash to the woodshed. I felt vindicated by that because <laughs> it was my first pick. Yeah, yeah, eighty-seven point seven percent to twelve point three percent. So <laughs> yeah, that, I, I thought that, that was going to be a bloodbath, and it definitely was. Yeah, so, really fun. Uh, just want to thank again the, the 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 many people who went through and voted on that. And again, if, if you want to, we're going to leave it up for a little while just to see if things change as more responses trickle in. So Mm -hmm. go to rumcast.com slash vote and that will take you there. And who knows? Oh, we also, we got some great feedback as well. Uh, You know, uh, someone someone suggested uh, involving more people next year, maybe like expanding to four teams and maybe using using a different website for the Mm -hmm. the rosters Mm -hmm. to kind of make the decisions even tougher. I also, I, we got this response from uh, Joe from the Long Island Rum Society, and uh, he said, he said, I listened to the episode in the car, and when Will's first pick was Rum Fire, I knew this was going to get exciting. Immediately, John's wind left the sale. <laughs> he was <laughs> deflated. I could have heard a, spo- a sports announcer give the blow-by-blow of the genius play by Will. In the car, Will was clearly in the lead with his picks, but now that I see the side-by-side comparisons by category, I realized John is the winner. It was neck and neck, literally down to the last pick between Worthy mm-hmm. Park 109 and Hamilton Jamaican Pot Still Black, two of my favorite rums. I was torn between the two. He ended up going with Ed Hamilton's rum there and uh, ended up picking you. So I loved, you know, Joe really had me in the first half with all the praise, calling my, my picks a you know, genius pick that, that really had me feeling good. And then I couldn't believe that he ended up going with you. So just just shows the roller coaster of emotions that, yeah, that yeah. we went through and some of our listeners went through as well. It was great to see. Yeah. And we, we won't read all of these, but I will say, Will, that I do feel at least a tiny bit better about <laughs> all of the comments that yeah. people picked a winner was for me. So, I know. Yeah. Everyone who like wrote in, it was like they... They it was it was all these like John voices just yeah. per- coming out of the woodwork. So I'll take that as a a, a consolation prize <laughs> and be consoled uh, you, you, for now. You maybe have the more passionate believers. 
uh, on, on your side. So uh, you are few, but but your 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 convictions are strong. So right. there are dozens of us, <laughs> dozens, <laughs> literally dozens. Um, all right, I think that's enough talk about the fantasy rum draft. Uh, as you said in the intro, we had Wes Bergen of FatRumPirate.com. I, I would say maybe the most popular rum review site out there. I have no idea, you know, yeah. what the traffic breakdown is. I, I feel like between that and the LoneCaner.com, our friend mm-hmm. Lance, who's been on the podcast as well, those to me have to be the most visited rum review sites on the internet. And yeah. that's, I think, part of the reason why I wanted to have Wes on as well, just because I think those guys have so much influence over what people decide to buy and they both have very distinctive viewpoints and palettes and things like that. I, you know, if, if you've read Wes's stuff versus Lance's stuff, they're completely different, but both great in their own way. So it was a really fun conversation just kind of digging into Wes's process, uh, sticking with the site. I think he's been doing it for eight years and just what it's like sort of having that much influence over people, what his process mm-hmm. is like how he feels about, you know, how rum has changed and evolved over the years. So just a really, a really fun conversation with someone who loves rum and uh, had a great time. Yeah, it it was a fun conversation. He's a, he's a great guy. And I love, he's very direct and, you know, that comes across in his reviews as well as in the interview, um, which, which is great in, in the sense that you know what you're getting, right? Mm -hmm. He's, he's very forward with how he views these things and how he thinks about things. And that's always interesting and fun to hear, uh, for a person, you know, it's not flowery language. It's not, uh, hiding behind anything. He's going to tell you like it is. And, and that's, uh, I think a lot of his appeal. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, it was a fun interview. If if you somehow haven't checked out Wes's site, we'll put links to the (laughs) show notes in there. I'm sure you've come across it. You know, we talked about his his site is also a really big destination for people who want to check on hydrometer test results. He does those with all the rums he reviews, which is to, you know, detect if anything has been added to the rum. And yeah, so enjoy the interview. Check it out. Go read Wes's site. Subscribe to it. Follow him everywhere. And enjoy the interview. All right, we are here with Wes Bergen of thefatrumpirate.com. Wes, I wanted to start this out by, I feel like I need to thank you because I would say your website, along with The Lone Caner and Cocktail Wonk, those are probably in the top three of websites that I refer to before just about every Rumcast interview We do, because I always know I'm going to find information on there about whatever guest we're talking to. So I think like our our previous interview, for example, we just talked with um, Kit Carruthers from Ninefold. It was our our previous interview. Yeah. yeah. And so I went to your website. It had tons of information. When we talked uh, with the founder of Dead Reckoning, your website had tons of information. When we talked uh that boutique rum company peter holland there's all kinds of great stuff on there so welcome to the show but i also just on behalf of the rum cast wanted to say thank you for providing such a wealth of information for the rum internet <laughs> thanks <laughs> for a long time too right i mean wow it's not yeah. like uh yeah it's been how long now it's um i think it was around about 2015 um, God, that seems like ages ago now when it yeah. started. And I th- actually, it might have even been 2014, but it only really went kind of, I think people started noticing it when I went on Facebook. Um, mm. around. I, th- I think that was around about Christmas 2014. Um, but yeah, um, uh, t- to be honest, I mean, when it, when it all started, uh, you kind of think, oh, I'll set up a website and see how it goes. And I think you don't realise how hard it's going to be to right, do it. Right. It's, it's a, it. It is a lot of work. People think, oh, blogging it's, it's dead easy but it's not and i think that the people you've spoke to you know lance at the lone cana and matt at um cocktail wonk it's because we consistently put stuff on there on the blogs and keep things up to date and keep things relevant and that's why they're, they're useful whereas there's so many blogs when i first started that have disappeared yeah. or you know mm-hmm. that the, you there's no point having a blog if you're not going to post at the end of the day i mean it's you know you might have a post that was brilliant five years ago, but it's not going to keep you up there. So it's it's this, and it's disappointing to see some of the people who do kind of fall off the radar a bit with what they're doing, mm-hmm. because you know, just life catches up with you sometimes, doesn't it? And things change, 
and what you can do maybe is in your twenties or your thirties as you get older, right. you maybe you just can't do, you know, because you've got other responsibilities. Well, I want I wanted to that, that transitions right into what I wanted to ask you to start is I understand you kind of you got started. The story as I've read it is you bought a rum that was a bit more expensive than rums you typically bought. It ended up being terrible, despite what you found out about it online. And you wanted to start a site where you could, you know, people could find more honest rum opinions. So, number one, I wanted to ask: is that is that an accurate summation of the story? And number two, that- I wanted to get to that point that you just mentioned because so many blogs, and John and I see this with um, podcasts as well. Yeah. Regardless of the format you you do, if you're putting out content consistently, it it is work, and a lot of people, you know, they can they can do five or 10 reviews, or they can do five or 10 podcast episodes or whatever. Um, so I wanted to ask you, like, what has it been that has kind of sustained you for almost, I mean, you started in 2014, that's, you're getting close to 10 years. So that's yeah. a long time to do this and, you know, be so consistent. What's kind of kept you in it and sort of sustained you? It, it, to be honest, it's just the constant kind of growth of the site, really, and seeing it get bigger and bigger. And I, I was for the first few years, I'll admit, I was a bit sad about checking how many views I was yeah. getting each day and, you know, trying to kind of force things almost. And I think I was one of the first reviewers that really went and said, right, I'm going to sign up to just about every room Facebook page I can find and I'm going to put reviews in there. And if okay. people complain that I'm spamming or whatever, then I'll, you know, I'll just leave the group. But no one ever did. Mm-hmm. And then I thought the other reviewers started doing that as well. And I think it sounds awful, but people are qu- quite lazy. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's just the way things have worked. I think especially in that the last 10 years, I think people just want, if you put something in someone's face, they'll read it. Whereas mm-hmm. if you just have a website there that's sitting there, people won't come to it type thing. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a funny one. Um, and it's difficult to measure your traffic because you can't see where everything's coming from and things. Right. But, but yeah, it's, it's, um, that's what kept us going. And then just getting more and more connections from different people in the rum world, you know, who were like at the time, quite not, not famous, I suppose, but people who you recognized mm-hmm. and then, Going rum to famous. Rum fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're rum famous. <laughs> and then it was, you know, I started to go to rum festivals and like we've got like a little group now of, of friends and stuff. I mean, you mentioned Kit earlier. I mean, he's, I've been to rum festivals with Kit um, and the other Scottish rum lads and, and stuff like that. Um, and it is, it's just like, it just, it just kind of grows. And then I, I've, I'm, don't get us wrong, I'm not one who, walks around the rum festivals I, I did wear my fat rum pirate shirt a couple of times early on <laughs> but i've stopped doing that uh-huh. um and people and people still don't really know who you are a lot of the rum festivals because they're not there's mm. not that many enthusiasts in the uk to be fair mm. but there's there's a little group that know who you are and you have a chat with a little producers with the producers and things and um it's it's just nice and then you know you get like recognized by people and you know, you just think, oh, well, I'll just keep going, people. And, yeah. And just, just comments, just general Facebook things, you know, oh, thanks for your review. I'm really pleased to review this because I was going to buy it. And just just li- just the little things, really, from from what I would say normal people, like people who have been in my position 10 years ago who kind of went in and thought, oh, I like rum, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Yeah. And just to give them a bit of, I suppose, direction. I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. i never tell anyone what to drink, you know, drink whatever you like as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just nice for people to come and say, oh, I bought this rum on the back of your review and it's really nice. Just just stuff like that, really. And I do quite enjoy, I, I enjoy writing the reviews um, as well, which is, which is, I think is another good thing as long as you're doing it because you enjoy yeah. actually writing and you, you get a kick out of it. I mean, I particularly enjoy writing horrible reviews about rums because <laughs> I can make it, <laughs> so I can make a few jokes and, you know, and but yeah, I just, it's just been a, you know, just a, a nice little little thing that just keeps just keeps going and going, really. Yeah. And w- was it accurate to say that betrayal was the feeling that started you out? That you felt that betrayal from that rum, like Will was asking? Yeah. I mean, there's there's still a a lot of. Re- <laughs> it's not even so much I would say rum reviewers specifically. It's more people who review like everything. Right. Right. And the, and you know they're getting it all free. Mm-hmm. And everything's good, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. if you read between the lines of some of these reviews, like if they're saying, oh, it's great as a mixer, it's probably not that good. 
mm-hmm. you know, the, the, it's they just don't want to say anything wrong because then obviously they won't get the the samples that keep coming. Not that I'm accusing that particular rum reviewer of doing that, um, but he does. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's plenty of stuff out there that I would I would say it it almost, especially if it's from a publication as opposed to an individual, it mm-hmm. almost just reads like a press release or something. Definitely. Like I mean, I don't I don't follow anything like um, the magazines and things mm-hmm. like that that are just general spirits things. I I like the individual people, you know, like Lance at Lone Cane, Steve at Rum Diaries, Ivor at Rum Revelations, mm-hmm. um, Alexander at the Rum Barrel. People who I know, uh, yes, we we do, we do get samples. You know, we, we do, of course we do. But I know that they're reviewing honestly on on in their opinions, and mm-hmm. it's not this. It's, it's the thing. It's, a, it's the thing I don't like about the industry, and that the industry knows what it's doing, mm-hmm. much the same as many other industries. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like I'll be nice to you, and I'll send you these samples, and you'll be nice back. And I'm like, right. I always say when people send me samples, it's like, you know. I'm not, you're not necessarily going to get a good review. Right, um, right. But at the same point, I don't really get samples now. Funny enough, I've never really got samples from the likes of, you know, your Bumbos and your Diplomaticos and right, all that. Right, I've right. never never really been offered anything from them. They and know I've, better based on your bad <laughs> reviews, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're like, oh, hell no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> I guess so. And then I've stopped kind of like getting stuff from spice drum companies as well because I to be honest, I just don't want to encourage it anymore. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's something I think John and I have had to think about as well, because people will reach out to us and, and want to send us samples. And one thing we've always done since the beginning has just been up front that, like, you know, we're happy to receive samples, but it, it doesn't mean we're going to have you on the podcast or anything like that. So if you want to send them, like, that's that's cool. But, you know, we we make a point not to promise anything or like make sure there's no expectation or anything. Right. Um, and especially also cause we're not, we're not really a review podcast. We talk about rum sometimes and share our thoughts and things, but we, we don't necessarily do reviews. So yeah, I think when, when I'm reading reviews, when it's from an individual, like you were saying, who has their own website. So, you know, they feel a sense of ownership over everything and I can get a sense of what their perspective is. I appreciate that so much more. And, and like you said, I feel like it's easier to build trust in that scenario where it's a person, they're in control of the publication as opposed to a big, you know, magazine or something like that. That, that touches on one thing I wanted to ask you about, though, which is I was reading an interview. I think it was on the Rum Compass blog that they did with you and you said something to the effect of, or maybe this is on your website where I read it, but you said that um, you don't believe it's possible to be 100% impartial, which I agree with. But I, I'm wondering, how do you deal with that when you're reviewing ROM? Are, are there yeah. any specific biases that you know you have that you try to be aware of? Um, <laughs> like, like what, how, do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's, it's a difficult thing. And I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm, this is me just going off about um, rooms with additives and added sugar and all that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, I do the hydrometer test, so I know if there's, if there's something being yeah. added or something. But I won't necessarily, unless we're talking about massive amounts, you know, then I, w- it, I won't let it dictate me t- taste. Because if there's massive amounts added, then I know I'm not going to like it because it's just going to be sugary water yeah. anyway and nine yeah, times yeah. out of ten it is but you know sometimes you get something with maybe 10 15 grams maybe it's less right. and i still really enjoy the rum so i'll still enjoy it you know and review it and give it the mm-hmm. score that i think it, it's done regardless of that it was it was more a case i think i was trying to kind of because rums unlike say a scotch whiskey or even bourbon because it's produced everywhere there's so many different styles and types of rum mm-hmm. that it's i mean I would say you could be a rum drinker and say not like agricole rum and that's mm-hmm. fine mm-hmm. and not like you know clarin or not mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know the heavily sugar sure. diplomatical stuff you can you like what you like and i i like what i like and you know i like demerara rum i like jamaican rum and i, I like barbados rum especially mm-hmm. and that's kind of what i like so when i first started reviewing i didn't want to be i didn't review much agricole because i, mm-hmm. I just hadn't got a taste for it I yeah. got a bottle of Lamoni Vio um, very early on. It looked lovely. It came in a lovely canister and a really lovely bottle, but I'd never had any agricole at all. Yeah. And I, I'd, I was literally at the point where I was drinking, I, I would dare say, a Diplomatico and Dictador. I was just getting into mm-hmm. kind of, it was very early on in the rum journey when mm-hmm. I was just trying different things. And it was 
to me, it was horrendous. Yeah, I mean, and that's actually, a far I, that's a far cry from yeah, Diplomatico. Yes, and, and I just just totally, I wasn't expecting it because it, to me, I right. mean, you could pretty much class rum agricole as a totally separate category of spirit, really, mm-hmm. because because I think it genuinely is so much different. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to get used to it. So I didn't really review much. I, I did a review of St. James Amber. I've still, I think I've still got it up there. I've done a re-review of it, but I'm, I cringe when I read the original view because I was so <laughs> clueless. It was like, you really shouldn't have been reviewing it. And I, d- I didn't review any more I got call after that. Mm. And then it was only really a, a few years ago when I met um, Lezek uh, Vedzika, who was a, at the time, he was a, a rep for uh, Weber House, Kach- okay. Kachasa. And I mean, Kachasa is Brazilian rum to a lot of people and mm-hmm. um, it's essentially kind of an agricultural rum but they do it in the pot still yeah and he's just started bombarding us with samples and stuff and i just got a real taste for it and then i developed more taste for agricultural and I've, I've reviewed more of that but i think it's more a case of i think you've got to recognize that you don't necessarily i think if you're going to review rum and you're going to review all types of rum you have to recognize that not everyone's your particular favorite type yeah, but you still got to know what's good. If that makes sense, like agricole, as far as I'm concerned, rum, rum GMX, or I think it's great. Mm-hmm. I like that. I'm not so keen on, on on Clement. I'm not so keen mm-hmm. on that. Yeah, I don't think it's as good. Mm-hmm. So that's where I kind of like base things on. Whether it's a hundred percent my type of actual, you know, drink. Whether I drink a lot of it, maybe I wouldn't. But I still appreciate what's good about it. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I think that's I think that's what some I feel some reviews sometimes miss that are oh, I just don't like that so But if you're going to review things, it's yeah, it's like if you're a food critic and you didn't like seafood, right? Could you like why would you then bash a fish dish just because yeah. you didn't like it? Right, it doesn't make right. sense, does it? You know what I mean? Because it, it could it's brilliant, just you don't like it. It's 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 a it's a queer it's, it's a funny one to try and explain. I'm I'm kind of I guess what I'm trying to say is I'll give something a good review that I don't really like. But that's not really what I'm saying. I just appreciate it for what it's meant to be. Right. You're you're talking about Wes education and expectations, right? Which mm-hmm. is a really important thing when you're talking about you. You mentioned you know if you've had agricole for the first time without really knowing the background, what's the difference? What's going on with it? And you taste it blind like that and think, well, I'm tasting rum. Of course, you're going to have a different reaction. So now it it just it goes to show how powerful those expectations can be on us and the education and the context behind what we're doing and what we're tasting. So I, I fully agree with you there. And and it's interesting to hear from you that that's part of the philosophy that you take into your style of reviewing is that you'll understand from a rum what it's bringing to the table. Even if it's not to your personal taste, you're still giving your kind of opinions on the quality that the rum carries, right? Is what I'm kind of yeah, hearing yeah. you say. It's, it's kind of like this, this is what the producer wants this rum to be. Yeah. This is how it's meant right. to be. It's... And, you know, people who like this type of thing like it. So yeah. it's like, I can't but, bash it, you know. That, that, that it's isn't a, it's a, funny. a good point, though, regarding just how diverse rum is. Because I feel like when I look at the landscape of whiskey, for example, there I, I do see every now and then some reviewers or some podcasts or whatever, and they talk about all types of whiskey. But you also just see a lot more specialization. Like you see scotch reviewers you see bourbon reviewers um you know you see irish whiskey reviewers or whatever and i feel like rum doesn't really have that specialization as much because it doesn't have as many explicitly defined categories um or known categories kind of like uh whiskey does so you you do have everyone kind of and I think I don't think that's something wrong with it. I think that's something that makes it really interesting and cool. So yeah, it's just interesting to think about that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's because I don't, personally, from my point of view, I'm the type of person who just likes trying loads of different things. Yeah, which is probably why I've got so interested in rum. I, mm-hmm. I like I like bourbon. I mean, don't get us wrong, I do, but I find it a lot of it quite samey. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it doesn't hold me interest the way that rum has because mm-hmm. I could still probably get I could probably still buy a rum from. God knows where Africa or somewhere or somewhere really strange, and it'll again be different from what I've had before, mm-hmm. and it'll be a new experience, and and that's what I like. I, I I always find it funny when reviewers keep like reviewing bottle after bottle of like Hamden of the same vintage, and it's just a different barrel. I just think, what's the point? It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, and then they're like giving them like a point and a half more than the other one. You just think 
they're all. I bet you wouldn't even be able to tell them apart if you give them them back. You know, like a year down the line, it's like that's why I always try to keep it as much as I've done about ten thousand Foursquare reviews now. Um, I try to keep things mixed up a bit with with what I review. But before we get too far, actually, and you touched on it a little bit in one area, but for those who might not be as familiar with your review style, which I assume there are not many people. <laughs> at this point out there that are listening to this that are not familiar. But for those that might not be, or even better, just how would you describe your overall style of reviewing to others or your overall philosophy with it? Yeah, I mean, the the first thing I'll do when I get a review, when I get a room is I always want to know if there's any additives in it. Um, I'm not militant or anything about it. I I just like to know. Um, Half the time I can tell just from tasting it, but sometimes the hydrometer will throw out a quite surprising result and I'm a little disappointed but nine times out of ten it's like yeah no it's 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 sugared so that's that's the first thing I go to but really what I try to do with the reviews is I'll just give a bit of background to the producer a little bit of um information on the bottle you know where you can get it how much it costs blah blah Mm -hmm. if I've got some little funny anecdotes about the the producer or the bottle or anything else I won't want to talk about I'll add that Mm -hmm. and then it's just a basic run through the rum really you know i mean i I do talk about the color but not that much just give Mm -hmm. you because Mm -hmm. i I don't think it's that important i don't talk about the legs and all that type of nonsense i i feel Um, you on the color thing anytime i start reading about a rum's color in a review and and this is just me i'm not trying to criticize it some people i'm sure do care about the color but i just like immediately skip over whatever paragraph is about the color interesting. i would i don't think i could ever write a paragraph about the color you'll, <laughs> you'll get basic you'll get a line and then it's you know i'll start talking about the nose the mid palette and, and the finish yeah and then i'll kind of like sum it up with how i think you know well basically whether i think it's worth buying or not um really um essentially is where we are and i'd say i would say any review i give three stars or over if you're really you know into your room and you want to try stuff then i would say give it a try especially if it's if it's cheap if it's a bit more expensive then maybe go for that the, the highest star martins but certainly that's where i go and anything i'm given one and two two stars i wouldn't be i wouldn't yeah. be bothering yourself i wouldn't I'd get get yourself a sample if you're curious it sounds like what you're saying, Wes, is there's not a whole big mystery to this. It's it's pretty straightforward in what you're doing. I heard something a long time ago from somebody that now I can't remember where it came from, but it's either you do something different or you do it better than others, right? And I guess what you're saying is there's no mystery to what you're doing. You're just trying to do the, the best job you can in a straightforward rum review and give people what they need. Yeah, I, I, I just kind of, I, I still, I don't, I just feel like I'm just normal. I'm just well, I am. I'm just a normal lad. You know what I mean? I'm not. Um, I'm not a trained professional in any way whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Got absolutely no expertise in in drinks or anything. I've, I've the only job I've ever had related to the drinks industry was washing pots and pans when I was 17 in a, in a pub <laughs> <laughs> and drinking drinking as much of the um, profits as I could. Um, and that was pretty much it, really. I've, I've, you know, I'm I'm. I've got a very boring job as a um, a tax professional, so it's it's, and I just I just kind of thought, oh, I didn't really like a lot of the rum reviews, not, not the rum review sites, but a lot of, like we've touched upon a lot of the sites that maybe aren't dedicated to rum, but we're reviewing rum yeah. and giving you kind of direction to buy this and buy that, and I just thought there's no, I, I, I and I would say to anyone now, any any rum site or anything you're following with reviews on find their lowest ranked reviews have a look for them and see how far they go are they, if they've got a you know if they've got like a, a a scoring scale of 50 to 100 how many how many reviews are in the 50s yeah you know and if they're all in the 80s and the 90s mm, mm. that's a good tip yeah you know it, it's like I've, I've got a scale and it's one to ten and i've it, and it goes down to half so i've got i've got plenty of reviews on that it's got half a mark and i've got plenty that's 10 and, and all in between i actually i did i did want to ask if you knew what your average score was have you ever calculated that i reckon it'll be about four okay because because really? be, purely because i would say because over the past few years i have given out a lot of high scores because i have been reviewing a lot of stuff i like there's a lot of good room um, out there i haven't been yeah well well there is um which is you know where to look you know, for it there's a lot of bad exactly. too but yeah oh of course there is right. but yeah i mean it might be lower but 
<laughs> maybe it's this actually when I think yeah. some of that well, to your half point, marks. <laughs> yeah, to your point earlier though about avoiding the rums you know that are probably not for you, that would also mean you're giving less of those end of the scores. So that that might support your theory there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 to be honest, I mean, there is brands that I don't like and I, I wouldn't buy, but if I see someone's bought a bottle of I know or that I'll try and get a sample from them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can often get samples from other reviewers and things that I know they've been sent stuff and I've said no, but then I'll say if I can pinch some of theirs um, because I don't want to encourage the brand. I still, it's just cu- it, a lot you of it's curiosity. Stay a lot of it's curiosity. Well, yeah, it's it, this again. It's it's the same as everything. There's no point me reviewing five star rooms all the time and just right. giving out five. You know, I need to still put some shit <laughs> shit reviews on <up> every <laughs> now and then. <laughs> Um, Wes, you, you, we're talking about these stars, and we mentioned it a couple of times, but you you stated also that your scoring system is kind of quote unquote borrowed from Dave Broom's cleverly titled book Rum. Yes. Um, h- how did you settle on adopting that as your scale, and how do you feel about it now after this many years? Yeah, I, ju- I to be honest, it's like, well, what's the difference between a ninety one out of a hundred rum mm. and a ninety two, or a ninety one and a half rum? One point. I just thought, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like and then i know the thing i was thinking now if i'd had to like review all the say the four square exceptional cask selections mm-hmm. and i've went i think i've went i might have even marked one as a four but i think most of them's four and a half or five mm-hmm. and if i'd had to go into the 90s i'd have i'd have i'd have drove myself around the bend basically <laughs> um and i just think is it really helping anyone and i just think Five stars as five stars, four stars as four stars. It, it's it's like me, when I used to read music magazines when I was a kid, and you'd read album reviews, and they'd be, they were just done that. They weren't you didn't get an re- album, you know, ninety one out of hundred. Yeah. And I just thought, yeah. And to be honest, Dave Broom's Rum Book is still the best Rum Book I've ever read. Um, and I just liked his style of writing, and I liked the way I just liked it. So I thought, well, I'll just I'll just nick it. Yeah, I, I think I, I have a similar personality where I think I would just drive myself insane and to boredom if I were trying to score something out of 100. Um, and some people do it great. Like it works for someone like Lance, for example. Love his site, love his reviews. He does uh, out of 100. I think he has like, I don't think he goes below a certain number, like maybe 50 is his lowest right. score or something like that. But for him, that works really well. For for me, I, I, I could never do that. I would just, yeah, I would just go insane trying to differentiate between a 91 and a 92 or something like that, for example. <laughs> um, you'll get, then you'll get people asking you like, oh, how come you give that 92 when you give yeah. that one 93? And it's like, oh, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of piss off, um, I did... <laughs> I, I just noticed today that you have comments disabled on your website, and I wasn't sure if you've done that since day one or if you made that decision eventually. And I was just curious about asking, you know, why you chose to do that. Yeah, no, originally and for a long time, I did have comments, and there is you still can comment on the older posts, but um, I think about, maybe it's about a year ago I decided to just disable them. <sighs> there wasn't really much. I don't think it was adding anything to the site. There wasn't any kind of like. There's plenty of discussion goes on on Facebook about the posts, and I just felt it was it was often just people just arguing or just making daft comments, and I just thought right. oh, it sounds a bit. So awful, the internet, but I just thought, essentially. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, just let just it just happen on Facebook, in- but not my website. <laughs> the internet being the internet, and I just thought it's it's just making it look a bit cluttery, and it's it was more when people kind of like jumping in my defence and like and just I don't know, I was just like I'll just leave it alone. I'm not yeah. bothered. I, yeah, I feel I you on thought, that. That's, it's it's easier. It's easier without. Them. I I honestly kind of agree. Uh, as a reader, I don't need the comment section on ninety nine percent of uh, <laughs> websites. To be honest, <laughs> um, can can you walk us? Th- you talked about your kind of style, but I'm also interested in just the the process. Like, do you have a very regimented process that you review? Can you just walk us through, like, start to finish? If if there's a run you're going to review how you go through the process well a lot of the time i'll i'll, I'll abort the room and um i'll pester my wife to take the photos because i'm useless at that side of things <laughs> so once she's took a photo of it then i can have a, a, a sly tot of it and um i'll give it a try and then to be honest there is no real well, will I, i've literally 
been sent samples and reviewed them within an hour of getting them. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. spend, I, I know and some people might think that's mad, but when I'm familiar enough with a particular style of rum, yeah. I don't I don't think I need to be spending weeks and months deciding whether I like it or not. I, I, you know, you just know. But invariably, it'll be, be within a week and I'll, I'll, I'll sit down and I'll have a glass um, and I'll, I'll, I'll start writing, you know, the backstory, the first half of it, the bit of background about the rum and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then depending on how I feel, I either just write down the taste and notes then, or I'll maybe just leave it and, and have another glass later on, depending on how, how nice it is. But no, I, I, I don't, and I don't sit and do, you know, I know some people do flights against other rooms to, you know, determine right. how good, they, I, I, I don't do stuff like that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, it's not a, it's not massively complicated. I'm not, I'm not a massively complicated person. That would take um, some of the I, joy I, out of it for you. I, it I just like. think I'm just going to sit and enjoy this room. And if I like it, I like it. I write yeah. down what I think about it. And then I give it a score. To be honest, I mean, the way I was reviewing when I was doing like maybe two, three reviews a week, sometimes it's even it's embarrassing, but maybe it's a couple of months later, it'd be like, oh, oh, I'm not sure if I've tried that rum. And then like one of one of my mates, like Steve would say, well, he reviewed it two weeks ago. You <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, oh shit. Things, <laughs> but, things can start to possibly, blend together after a while. Yeah, possibly makes it sound like a bit of an alcoholic. But um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just when you're in the, the, the shave, I mean, the amount of rooms I try as well, I mean, it's probably more than 10 a week. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time you get wow. your samples and get a couple of bottles in and things. It, but that's just the way I am in, in, in terms of a person. I like trying different things. I, like when I used to, back in the good old days when I was younger and used to go out drinking, Yeah, you'd never see me with the same drink. Mm. It was, it's, I'm just that type of person. Like right. if I go to a restaurant and like we'll be sitting down, my wife is saying, oh, what are what you going to get? And I'll be like, oh, I'm going to get this, this, and this. And then by the time the waiter comes, I've changed my mind another four <laughs> times and I'm getting something uh-huh. completely different. Uh-huh. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm just that type of person. I, I don't know. You're Which is probably, <laughs> uh, probably is why rum's ideal for me because there's just yeah, so much. Yeah. And, and it's it's uh, literally every time I go and say I go in at the supermarket, or if I say a rum I haven't tried before, I'll just buy it. Yeah. Do you ever come across a rum that is more challenging to decide what your opinion of it is or is yes. it is it always pretty much a gut like i like this or i don't once once i, th- I think in terms of say you know your jamaican rums your, your demerara rums yeah. your barbados rums you, you kind of know what you're getting uh-huh. and I, I think it takes something pretty dramatic for that to change um i've had a four square that was in a ex scotch whiskey cask mm-hmm. which was bloody awful to be honest <laughs> but other than that but it's it's when you start you know reaching out somewhere and i think renaissance distillery is probably is the one that's really kind of i found quite strange i think that's taiwan they i, I don't know if you if, if if you're familiar with them but basically they're even more descriptive than say your values or anything like that they list everything on the front of the bottle oh yes i've the seen bottles those are just yeah it's obs- just like a they're like, like a giant word cloud <laughs> obscene and to be honest, the rum is as confusing and as complex <laughs> as the bottle. So it's and a fitting just, label. And you, I was on ages with it, and I only had a little sample. And that was one instance where I had to go back two or three times, mm-hmm. and I'm s- still not totally sure about it. <laughs> but like, I don't. It's one of them things where I don't dislike it, uh-huh. but there's bits about it I don't like. But there's mm-hmm. bits I like, yeah. which is kind of weird. It's like it's weird. It's, it's normally quite, I find quite black and white. You either like some or you don't. But with that one, and I think a lot of I've spoken with Steve from Mum Diaries as well, as well about it, and I think he's equally found it quite challenging. And do I like it? Do I like it or do I not like it? Like mm-hmm. it's one of I think it might be one of them mood rums. You know, sometimes yep. there's rums that you've got that on one day you'll be like, oh, I couldn't even face it, and other days you just kind of get enough of it. That's, that's but, how I yeah, feel but, about not the entire category, but a lot of Clarence, for example. I, f- I find that with with a lot of very power, powerful rums like that, that it is a mood rum for me. A mood and then also, like it. it's like the outlier rums that I find difficult sometimes to form an instant opinion on. You know, I mean, like, like you were saying, you find something that's interesting, but it's like, I have to wait and see if, if this is something I really... And gonna want to come back to a bunch of times. Yeah, I mean, I mean the Clarence. I mean, Clarence obviously only aged, aren't they? So, and you know, it's it's mad what 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 they produce. And 
you know, the first couple you have, you're like, flipping hell, what the hell is this? <laughs> um, and again, it's just like agricola, isn't it? And you, you kind of either tune into it or yep. it just you just think, no, I'm just gonna just gonna leave it. I mean, even you know, the stuff from Hamden can be quite an, an um, long pond. If if you're giving you up I mean, there in those in those high 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 aster marks, things things yeah. get a little wild. I mean, arguably my favourite ever room is a long pond, Duncan Taylor, fifteen year old. Um, but if I'd been given that at the start of my mum journey, that probably would have ended. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and like, first and last drum. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Back to the Future. If somebody did that, and we have no fat rum pirate. It is. It's, it's... <laughs> Wes, how often do you revisit rums that you've reviewed? So you talked about having the samples and you get to them fairly quickly. Do you leave some and come back to it later in every instance? Or is it just the challenging ones? Or how does that happen? And and does your opinion change over time in that way? Yeah, I mean, I, I used to have quite a half-decent collection of rum. Um, and then the, the, the kids came along and there was kind of <laughs> no... Yeah, I feel you. Uh-huh. And there was kind of nowhere safe to put the bottles. So just unfortunately... Just had just to had drink to them. Drink them. <laughs> 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 so to be honest, and I, I do, every time I get a bottle, I, I say, oh, I'm going to put a little tot aside and I'll come back to it later. And I rarely do. I mean, the, there's, there's, there is rums in my review, uh, Canon, that I do revisit up often and mm-hmm. um, the likes of chairman's reserves you're talking more the cheaper stuff mm-hmm. um i've i'll if i can if i'm ever abroad and i say like little miniatures of stuff like zakaba or anything like that I'll, I'll always you know pick a couple up and um, just to kind of like say how things are going but I, I, i've i think i've re-reviewed maybe two or three rooms over the years one one room I really need to re-review is Pusses because uh, it's nowhere near mm, as good as mm-hmm. it used to be, unfortunately. Mm. I, I don't understand why. Um, mm. But other than that, I think most a lot of rums will stay pretty much the same. Um, I've noticed Coxburgh's changed a lot, but then the, the bottle design's changed and the, the whole thing with um, right. Maze and Fairhand and everything yeah. has changed. Mm-hmm. So it is a different rum. And I, I think um, it, would, it would be virtually impossible for us to try and go back and review i think there's about a thousand reviews up now that'd be quite um, the project i don't even th- <laughs> do it all over again right <laughs> I, if, if anyone ever wanted to sponsor the project i'd be more than uh, willing but um <laughs> i have a, a good good one here I, i've been wanting to ask you now that you are rum famous uh <laughs> we'll say uh possibly the the most infamous famous rum, 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 rum yes, infamous there you go <laughs> Uh, definitely the most famous rum reviewer slash tax accountant that I know. Um, <laughs> do, do you ever now consider the impact that writing a review on a rum is going to have? Or, yes. you know, essentially giving it a certain score, is, you know that may affect sales either way. Mm-hmm. Uh, do those thoughts now come through your head? I do, and I, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, around about three or four years ago, I did a review of a particular spice drum um, mm-hmm. in the UK, and... Um, to be honest, I didn't give it as bad a review as I perhaps could have. It was it was okay. It wasn't that sarcastic. And I started getting some funny messages from the brand owner via the, the Fat Run Pirate. And um, he basically challenged challenged us to ring him. Thinking, I think he didn't think I would dare ring him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess that you did. So I rang him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, Did he answer the phone? When he finished shitting his pants, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he'd left quite a few aggressive messages and funny little things on there. I was going to say, you described like, oh, them as funny, so but your this. face told me that they weren't actually very funny. Yeah, and I was like, oh, you're, not, you're not having, I'm not having this. So I, I give him a ring and um, we, had a, we, had, we had a long chat. I mean, it's, and I totally, don't get us wrong. I mean, I totally understand. He's like, he, it, it's a young brand. He's trying to do this and he's trying to do that. And I was like, well, that's fine. But my review is not that bad. It's not going to like do you any harm. But like, what do you want us to do? Mm-hmm. What Do you want us to say it's great when it's not? And he's like, oh, well, you, and I was like, oh. and he was, um, yeah. And then um, I got another email, probably was about a year ago from another rum brand. And um, that weren't happy that I'd given their room a bad review, mm-hmm. um, and basically kind of coming out with the same stuff. Did I realise what I was doing? It's just a small company, blah blah. And it's kind of like, well, just 
read the review and if you think you like take on board what I've said and maybe yeah. you can do something better. You know, it's it's I don't know I, I don't know what they want you want you to say or, or what you want want you to do. You know, it I mean don't get us wrong, I did feel a, a bit bad, you know, sure. but it's kinda like, well, yeah, it's, I, I don't know I don't know what you want. It's it's interesting because, you know, I'll get samples from new producers. Uh, a lot like you know young distilleries craft distilleries things like mm-hmm. that here in the US and sometimes they just send stuff and they don't ask for feedback or anything like that and so if they don't ask for it you know i don't i don't give it and i don't have a review site so you know i'm not reviewing it anyway but sometimes people will want feedback and i found the people who ask for it in general have been really receptive even when i've had to send stuff that like i know is really going to disappoint them that actually happened Recently, um, I, I got some samples from a, a distiller who's really nice, great, passionate about rum, doing things, I think, a lot of things the right way, and sent me some samples, asked for feedback, and, you know, I was honest in just, um, you know, what I thought needed to improve. And to me, like, that's what I think, especially if you're a newer distiller, that's what you should crave is mm-hmm. finding out, like, you know, what people actually think beyond just people who are coming into your distillery um, or yeah. your family and friends, because, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to, most of the time, they're not going to be honest. And sometimes, you know, their opinion, uh, you know, they may not know rum that well. And I'm not saying I'm the world's foremost expert or anything, but I'm someone who buys a lot of rum. So, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, it's, I, I agree, it's tough. It, it doesn't feel great ever, I think, to give negative feedback to somebody. If, if if someone comes and asks, you know, like what what do you think of this? Can you yeah. give us your, then you'll you'll get honesty from me. And if I mm-hmm. think and I'll but I'll, at the same time I'll tell you what needs to improve. I mean I've spoke to a few of the the, the Scottish rum producers and they've sent us the samples. Um, mm-hmm. And I've said you know if they've sent like maybe two different ones of what they're planning on doing, I've said which one I prefer, and I'll tell them why I prefer it. And that uh-huh. that's. I don't, I don't know. I, it, again, this is this is maybe the problem. I don't think just with the rum industry, but the drinks industry in general, is too many people, too many hangers on who will say everything's great and oh mm-hmm. that's wonderful and you're great and what you're doing is brilliant and mm-hmm. you can never put a foot wrong and it's just like well, not no no it, even the best rum producer in the world can do a shit rum. You know, it's like yeah. I, you've mentioned the hydrometer readings a few times. I, I think you're one of the people that's been pushing for more honesty in rum for a long time. Do you feel like much has changed since you first started doing that? Like in the long run, do you are you optimistic about there being more transparency around additives or thing like that? Or has what you've seen only uh, maybe discouraged you more about <laughs> uh, about future prospects? I, I, I don't, to be honest, I think the hydrometer tests and the people who read them and look at them are very much a small clique of enthusiasts. Mm-hmm, right. I, I, I think the more you get into room, the more you kind of like think it's big, like your little circle is bigger than it is. Mm-hmm. And it's not. And being in the UK and going to room festivals in the UK and seeing how Spice Drum is still king and how... Wow. You know, mm-hmm. flit, I'll go to a room festival and someone will come to me saying, oh, you've got to go over there and try this room. It's wonderful. I'm like, oh, what is it? Oh, it's hazelnut flavored chocolate Nutella rum. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> wondrous. It's you not know, for me. And, yeah. it, it, and that's once you get out your little bubble and, you know, the little even the Facebook groups. I mean, I, I go down the supermarket today and there'll be maybe three or four proper rums and about 20 different flavored rums. Dead mm-hmm. Man's Fingers is very much the king over here right. at the minute with all that 25 different flavors. And different and, colored bottles. Oh, they're hideous. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it is, and I, I just think, yes, I think it has worked amongst en- enthusiasts to a point. But once you, what, you're into casual drinkers who just want a cheap bottle for the weekend, 15 mm. quid, and it gets them drunk, and that's all the bother about, and it tastes nice and that, yeah, the light rum, but they, they wouldn't know rum if it, you know, kicked them in the face. Really, they, you could you could flavor that same yeah. dead man's fingers with vodka, and they'd be none the wiser. Right, they really right. wouldn't. Yeah. Well, and, um, I think, and, and that's a sad thing. I think yeah. there's two things there. There's, I think, a lot of times. I, I guess maybe I'm, I'll just speak for myself when when I'm talking about additives and rum. I'm mostly talking about 
rums that are marketed purely as rum. So not a flavored rum, not a spiced rum, but that have been sweetened in some way, maybe have some sort of flavors going on. And as you were saying, they're not stated anywhere uh, on the label. So, you know, you just, you, you get it. And if you're a more experienced rum drinker, you maybe pick up on it. If you're newer, you just think that's how rum is. But then the other side is you also have the explicitly flavored and spiced categories. Um, with the challenge there is even though they're labeled differently from actual mm-hmm. rum, they're they're put in the same category as rum. And so many people just view those as rum in a way that I don't think you see in a lot of other categories. Like I, I, I don't think people people don't really mistake fireball for whiskey, for example. Yeah. Like it's, it's like the, the tail laid, it's the tail laid in the dog for me with, with spice drum. It's like mm. most people think, oh rum, oh yeah. And the first thing it says, oh Cap Morgan, right, like, oh, right, 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 Cap Morgan right. spiced or lamb spiced, or and mm. it's like that's not rum. Like you wouldn't get that with whiskey, you know. Yeah. You, like you said, there, no one comes and say, "Oh, oh I love Drambuie or I love Fireball." Or, <laughs> right, yeah. Uh-huh. It's and it, it's just to, even even vodka. If you say like vodka, mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah, there's a million. I'd say the, the, the only other category that's probably is getting that way is gin. Yeah, and that the strawberry and the pink like I don't like gin, and my wife doesn't like gin, but mm-hmm. my wife drinks pink gin because ah, it doesn't taste because it doesn't taste of gin. Uh huh. <laughs> it just tastes yeah, strawberry. Can't taste the juniper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. God. <laughs> so it, and you just think, oh, I like gin. It's like you don't, you don't like gin at all. But yeah, no. <laughs> well, I, I take on what you're saying about the where we're going with the hydrometers with the, um mm-hmm. with the additives and things and the premium rums and. They're they're always going to be popular. I mean, Zacabas, yeah. it's not going to go away. Diplom- Diplomatico won't go away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the 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 hate the hate is stay. Um, and to be fair, they're not massively hugely priced, really. I mean, yeah, yeah. Look at the, you know, they're not trying to take anyone's eyeballs out in terms of price, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you get up and then maybe it's the Zacabex or which is a lot more than I'd pay for that sort of thing. Right. Again, you just wish to just be a bit more honesty, but I think they've started to do it. I mean, Bacardi have started putting that um, amount of sugar that's added mm-hmm. to their rums and things. Yeah. But And Diplomatico have as well. But if you notice the way they're doing it, they're doing it by like a, a 25 milliliter. I actually just noticed that on Diplomatico's website for the first time yesterday they had like a nutritional information link and i went to that and it shows the uh grams of sugar i think it was per 30 milliliters yes and it doesn't so it looks like nothing really and it's like well but it it makes a massive difference to the flavor i mean yeah if if you've if you've ever tried their their single still stuff the the ones where they haven't been messed I'm, i'm i'm not being funny but I think even said in the review, you can tell why they add the sugar because there's just nothing there, really. Mm. It's just column boring, column distillate. Well, that's part and parcel of the whole thing, right? You're saying that, hey, for that price, when you add in that amount of additives, it makes it into something that people can enjoy. And therefore, it kind of, you know, like the tail wagging the dog, like you said, it's that whole cycle of that's the price point they're, are, they're aiming at. It's a not great distillate, but when you add that stuff in, it makes people who are none the wiser it's interested. It's yeah, smooth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the worst. The face bomb. <laughs> do you the worst do you do you ever uh, have you ever written the word smooth on your I, blog? I have, I have, I have, but I always make a bit of a. Um, you um, acknowledge that yes, you're aware uh, of using yes, the word smooth. Yes. It's not smooth in the way that you might think it means. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> it's sitting down. It's um, smooth in terms of a proper spirit. Yeah, but that's a, that's the thing. I, 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 another thing I find funny. It's like, oh, I really like this rum because there's no burn. It's like, mm-hmm. well, it's forty percent spirit. There's got to be yeah. some kind of burn there. Right, Why right, is yeah. you drinking pop? You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I didn't. Oh, it's just despair. With despair sometimes. <laughs> Uh, shifting into the, maybe the positive a little bit more here, uh, we've seen you've reviewed a fair amount of rums distilled in the UK at newer distilleries recently. Mm-hmm. Can you give us uh, your temperature check on where you think the category is at the moment and some standouts? Yeah, I mean, especially in the UK, I mean, the, the people who I'm particularly um, involved with at the moment um, are the likes of Jay Gow, Ninefold, um, Sugar House, mm-hmm. um, and Isla. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really interested um, in what they're doing as well. Mm-hmm. 
obviously a, a lot what they're doing because they're in Scotland, it's going to take a while for the age stuff, but that only yeah. age stuff is unreal. It, it really it. is. It's, it's, it's as good as anything really. If you like it's molasses heavy and it's, it's just fantastic. Um, and it's, it's not bad. It's, it's not cheap, cheap because obviously the little small right. distilleries, right. Right. but it's, it's well worth the money. If you, if you can get a hold of a bottle or two when you're over here, I'm trying to think in the UK and to be honest, I haven't had that much involvement in, England, it's funny as it funny as it is, mm. um, in terms of what they're doing. There is a few more distilleries, but the Scots but it's, seem it's, to have it together. It's it's again, we're going back to being a bit biased, but I'm I'm good friends with quite a lot of them, and but only well, not only because they do good rum, because the canny lads as well, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, they're just doing really great stuff. John actually asked Kit when we had him on a couple weeks back in one of your interviews, you mentioned that you received samples from him with explicit names. <laughs> and John asked if he remembered what was on there and he couldn't remember exactly, but he did remember, he, he thinks he was trying to send them, I think to his friend at Sugar House and they ended up with you. Um, and yeah, so we had a good laugh over that. No, I think I've, I think I've had a, a taste of Kit's ass a couple of times now. <laughs> <laughs> so one one last thing I wanted to ask you, John and I are always whining about the European releases that we can't get over yeah. here in the US. A lot of the IBs and things like that. You know, there's a few that do some releases over here, but it it's in no way comparable to to what's available in Europe. I wanted to to turn the table and ask, and the answer may be no, which is okay. We won't be offended, but are there any <laughs> primarily U.S. releases that you wish you could get in Europe that you can't? Yes. Um, I would say yes. the, the, Hamil- the Hamilton stuff. Mm. I thought Hamilton might be uh, worse. Yeah. Yeah. Hamilton and, oh, there was something else as well I liked. I can't remember what it was now. There was something else I was jealous about. Uh-huh. Well, it Hamilton, might come back to us. Definitely Hamilton. Yeah. Hamilton's uh, such a great one because there's such a wide range of stuff. And it's, I think, one of the the best pricing you can find. Um, yeah, it's it's for, not, I mean, your bottles are, are typically cheaper than ours anyway, but it seems really well priced. Yeah, um, yeah, Ed knows, what what he's, Ed knows what he's doing and knows his audience, I think, extremely well. So, yeah, we're big fans of his stuff, but it would be cool to see to see Hamilton over there in Europe because I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. sure... I mean, the, the, whole, the Care stuff's really good as well. Yeah. Holmes okay. Care, but I mean, I mean, a lot of it's kind of like... The, Similar to stuff what we can get over here, but sure. you know Eric's a, a great guy, yeah, and um, he's doing great getting good stuff over to use there. I think, yeah, I think yeah. Eric is kind of a a hero for rum enthusiasts in the U.S. because he was one of the first so. to to bring those types of releases and make them uh, more widely available over here. So yeah, but but I totally get what you're saying, and you know you you have a, a pretty good selection over there of IBs already, but. And I've always wanted to try. This is sounds. I know a lot of people think I'm nuts for this, but cruise and blackstrap. Oh, really? You've I'm never had, never you've ever never been had able to get a bottle of it. And I, I know it's not going to be anything brilliant. Yeah. But it's just it's it's I suppose just like Goslins and stuff like you. You just need to just say what it's like. Yeah. Cruise, black, cruise and blackstrap. Um, it's almost. It's actually one of the more annoying things to me in rum because I feel like that bottle single-handedly made tons of people think that there's some black strap <laughs> style of rum because um, you see all the time and you know recipes for jungle birds especially and things like that online people will say oh you have to have a black strap rum for this and I'm like by saying that you're really just saying you need to use Crucian Blackstrap with this because <laughs> it's you're not saying you need a rum from Blackstrap Molasses or anything like that. And Crucian Blackstrap to me is really I mean, it's so heavily I, I don't know what all is done to it. It but will be colored. It's it's oh, massively yeah, it's colored, oh, yeah, isn't it? And oh yeah. It's black as, you know, super strong coffee. Motor green. oil. Yeah. Um, but I mean it's it's really more of a rum liqueur, I would say. And I I think like I think it can work well in cocktails when used as a liqueur. I find when people use it as the entire rum, even in a Jungle Bird, I know some people love Jungle Birds with all of that rum, and I just think it's it's uh it overpowers it. But now now I want to go on a mission to get you a sample of Crucian Blackstrap over there because I want to read yeah, your review of it. We got to figure out a way to get that done. <laughs> um, 
Well, Wes, now that uh, we, we've gone through everything, I think there's only one thing left for us to do, which is the rapid fire round of questions. Uh, I know you're, yeah. you're familiar with this. You already told us you were up for it. Um, so I'm excited to see how you handle this. But I'll ask you one more time. Are, are you are you prepared to, to go through it? I'm more than happy with it. <laughs> okay. uh, Wes sat it back in his chair. He relaxed for a second. He's like, let me focus. Let me get in the zone here. Knuckles. Yep. All right. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, Wes, how this works. Basically, we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. Will will be our timekeeper. We're going to go through as many of these short answer questions as we can. So uh, short answers, uh, you you can answer whatever you want. There is no right or wrong answers. It's only yours. And we will do the best we can to get through these. I've got 60 seconds and go. All right. Need or on the rocks? Nate. Column, pot, or blend? Blend. Aged or unaged? Itched. And molasses or cane juice? Molasses. All right. Name a place producing some of the best rum in the world right now. Barbados. Barbados, okay. Uh, for income tax, do you prefer flat tax or graduated tax? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Good well answer. Done. All right. Uh, is there a rum that sticks out in your memory as being so incredible that you considered giving it a sixth star? A Long Pond and uh, Duncan Taylor. Yeah, damn, old. that came to mind fast, too. <laughs> nice. Um, your favorite person to share a great bottle of rum with? Stephen James. All right. Stephen's a great guy. Um, when you go to a rum festival in person, do you ever worry that your image as a reviewer will be compromised <laughs> since you aren't actually a pirate, nor are you actually fat, at least by American standards? You're not. You're not. So either of those. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the best answer you can give there. <laughs> what hidden talent or do most rum geeks have no idea that you possess? Oh, I can put me fist in my mouth. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> That's great. All right. And finally, if you found a magic lamp that would allow you to summon one full bottle of rum to you wherever or whenever you are at any time, an unending supply, and you could give it to not only yourself but to everyone to enjoy, what bottle would it be? Cameron Suzette. Man, you are That's fast the on time. these. Excellent. Wow. I, you know, Wes, I feel like you might have been the, the, the top candidate for getting through the amount of these uh, that we got through in those quick answers. Yeah, a lot of will people, has anybody ever been as good? A lot of people will hem and haw and kind of not want to give an answer to stuff or need time you to were think. Quick. But you, you burned through those. Very, very impressive. Agreed. Thank you. Well, Wes, you you braved all the questions. We got through everything. I think we wanted to talk about um, any anything else. Any any um, words of wisdom out there for everyone? Maybe aspiring rum reviewers that you want to share. I mean, if anyone's thinking of starting a rum blog then you know and they want any help just send us a message you know and i'll um, help them as much as i can but it'd be lovely to say more rum writers about really and for sure awesome well thanks again for taking the time for joining us everyone go read the fat rum pirate.com you've we link to wes's reviews a lot in our show notes we'll put some links to the site up in the show notes as well but uh wes thanks for doing what you do and keep doing it here's to eight more years no That's problem. right. Thank you. <laughs> we should have asked, uh, Will, uh, and now that we're we're done, but we should have asked, uh, how many stars would you give the Rumcast podcast? But I'm afraid <laughs> oh, to hear the answer. Five out of five. Five out <laughs> of five. Great answer. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> everyone thanks again for listening to another episode of the rumcast if you want to read more of wes's reviews and musings on rum you can go to fatrumpirate.com we'll put links up in the show notes as well for you to check that out and again remember if you want to get some last minute votes in for the fantasy still rum time. draft there's still time people <laughs> john wants you to know there's still time um, uh, you can go to rumcast.com slash vote I was trying to resist making a stop the count joke there. Um, I'll just I'll just move along. But yeah, you can Keep go to rumcast.com slash vote <laughs> to do that. And yeah, uh, love the the enthusiasm and feedback we got on that. Thanks everyone for listening. Uh, and and also if you have more comments, you want to leave some feedback, you can send us an email, host at rumcast.com. You can also message us on social media. John, where where can they find us there? 
They're going to go to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. We are at the Rumcast on any of those platforms, and we do our best to get back to everybody. So when you leave comments there uh, or direct messages, we see them there uh, or email. Any of those really works. We try to interact as much as we can. Uh, I would love to hear what people think about uh, some of the the rapid fire questions with Wes there. I'm still scared. I might have offended him with one of them. I'm not <laughs> sure, uh, but hopefully not. You know, he's he's a direct guy, so he'll let me know. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it was it was a really uh, really good episode, and uh, thank you all. Thanks to Wes first of all, and thank you all so much for listening to this show. Uh, we continue to try to find ways to make things fun and interesting, as you can see with the fantasy rum draft. And uh, please let us know what your thoughts are. We've got a, a good amount of comments, but if if there's something you think that we can do differently, Will mentioned in the uh, intro that we're going to try to expand this, and I'm already working towards that. So if you've got those ideas, send them our way. Let us know what you think and how you want to see this in the future um and yeah that's it and will anything else before we head out i think that's it i'm gonna go out and uh eat some delicious uh roman manja tonight yeah exactly you can help me with the italian it was my job to to study the catalan and spanish before Ah, we got here samantha handled the italian so i'm a little bit behind on that but grazie to all of our listeners thank you (laughs) grazie mille we'll see you next time (laughs) 